Okay, so today I'm going to attempt to, uh, quickly as possible, make a Gary the Snail for today's Tuesday Tinker Challenge. Um, yeah, so uh, some basic shapes there with some sort of interesting colors I'll try to replicate without getting too uh, crazy. There is no um, explicit paint function within Tinkercad. But um, I'm going to try and do some interesting tricks to accomplish uh, the multicolored options there. Obviously, in the palette is somewhat limited as well. So, without too much ado, go in and delete my placeholder there. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So, show. Once I've brought in some of the shapes, I can just sort of duplicate them. Um, parabola, or paraboloid, half sphere, cylinder, obviously, and scribble. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, for scribble tools, I'm gonna just try a little trick um, to make the little yeah shape at the bottom of the snail, his little undulating foot. I'll just turn this to extrusion and use it as a special cut tool. Um, just trying to give myself a little bit of thickness here. I don't have to worry about any weird little artifacts showing up underneath him. Okay, so done. I kind of jumping the gun on that, but just because I brought it in. Uh, oops. I didn't need to do that. Okay. Let's horizontalify it if I can. Work plane. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So, looking back quickly to, yeah, Gary the Snail. So that's, yeah, undulating underneath. He doesn't seem to have a real typical snail swirl. It just kind of is a lump, I guess. So I will go with the sphere. I'm going to make a duplicate right away because um, I'm going to need those for the eyeballs, obviously. And if I press and hold shift, this will get much larger in all directions, or axes. And, okay. So nice and big, but I do want to squish it somewhat flat. I think I'm going to work sort of laterally, even though normally I think I would set this up sort of diagonal. Um, this is going to be a lot easier if I can just keep jumping back and looking at the source image just to make sure I'm not doing anything too weird. Um, let's center these two objects as well. A line on that center line, front to back. Uh, yeah, because I want his front end to be sticking out a little bit. Quite a bit actually there if you look at it um, for his little can we call it a face i'm gonna make a duplicate and just shift that forward that way i can kind of thicken that part up a little bit okay now his his um, Shell seems to have like this little rim along the edge of it. I'm going to use this tool. Trim this off because obviously I won't get quite the same effect that I'm hoping for here. Merge that in here. Let's stretch it a little bit. Uh, let's make a duplicate. One thing I do love about um, 
Tinkercad is that you can still go back and ungroup and you haven't destroyed the object that you've done that action to. So here, um, come back and find that little bit of our donut shape. I'm going to use that to fill that just a little bit here. Let's rotate that 180 and spot 180. I'll stay inside the circle, then it'll snap to that point. Shift. Okay. Let's zoom into that and see how we're doing there. Kind of gets the point across, I think. Uh, I should line them all up, I guess. Let's use the align tool one more time. Let's zoom out a bit so I can see those reference dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of lag time. Oh, I selected too many objects. Sometimes it does that when you're zoomed in. Actually, you grab something in the foreground, which really you shouldn't have touched. Okay, so I think I'll squeeze in his. Okay, flip him around, see how that looks. Same thing. A little bit of that shell border there. Touch. A little tiny gap in there. If you find that you're doing like a fine detail where it's, it's not quite snapping or it's going a little bit past what you want, you can go down to the snap grid function there and make it a little finer. So a quarter millimeter, which is pretty precise. It just gives me a little more of an option there. Um, so eye stocks. I'm going to shrink this down first um, in all dimensions. So I'll hold shift and ooh. Okay, and then I'll stretch just the height to get our stocks, but it's still a little bit thick somehow. Again, I'll go back to the reference image. And yeah, they're pretty thin. I don't want them straight up and down either. Let's get them. Change our camera angle here. Let's twist it a bit. Okay, so just a little bit aside. And just ever so slightly forward as well. Yeah, I still feel like they're too thick. Just a bit. Check my source image again. So yeah, they're, the eye stalks are pretty high. The eyeballs actually are almost at the very top of the shell. So keeping that in mind, I will have to increase the height here. One thing I have to be careful of is uh, when stretching an object. This one I don't care as much. Um, not like about precision but when you start to tilt something and then you come back and you realize oh I, I, I want to elongate or change the dimensions on that um, that it behaves differently um, when you when you have um, rotated it It's kind of not perfect, but I'm going to bring that a little bit further back. Let's see, home view. Okay, let's shrink this down a little bit because it's large. I haven't played with the colors at all yet, but that's okay. We are up in the air, so I should be getting close. So when you have that, you don't have your sort of normal eyeball depth that we take for granted. 
it's helpful to look at where the shadow is falling in terms of, oh, okay, where is this in space? And that'll give me an idea of how well you're lining it up. That looks pretty good. Control D to duplicate. If I press shift, especially because I, I moved it down to quarter millimeter at a time, the press shift while doing sort of arrow keys, uh, I am able to move it in larger jumps. Kind of happy with this so far. Not to congratulate myself too much, but so uh, also the additional feature here that I wanted was this weird mollusk snail foot. Okay, okay, it's a little tiny bit more. I'll make sure I cut all the way through that. And we can zoom in and have a look at that and see how good that looks. I'll be okay if I, you know, leave some flat spots because this is, you know, assuming it was to be 3D printed at some point, I would, uh, yeah, probably appreciate something like that. And let's extend this a little bit because you'll see right here it's sort of cutting a little bit away of the mouth area, which I do still need to build up. So I'm going to make another duplicate of this on this sphere. And I'm going to pull that one forward. Again, changing the shape. I'm going to look at the source image that we because it's not this uh, interesting. Yeah, he's got like lips going on there. It's kind of a quirky, I don't know, it's almost like he's burping or something. I'll need a little bit of okay. Now why did I bring in the parabola? Let's use it anyways. Burp. And it up a touch. Sometimes depending on the angle that you're looking at it, it's harder to get to the rotate arrow that you want. Um, let's see how this interacts with that shape. Zoom in. see how it's going to be interacting with and cutting away with that dark area there. Same thing with the mollusk foot area. Hmm. Let's see another bit. Hmm. So mostly blue ice stalks and body. So this kind of brings me into where I'll be doing some tricks to do the coloring. So eye stalks, body, mouth cut. So I'm gonna group it first. It's gonna make them all the same shape. And so let's go for like a light blue. The, let's select everything here. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way and then I press and hold shift and click this other portion I don't want, it's going to let go of it. And that's, let's just go with pink right away. Oops. Reselect. Reselect. Let go of the light blue portion. And go with the light pink. And then the eyeballs. I'm assuming they're white, but maybe for fun, let's go for a light yellow. Just so we can see them against the background. Yeah, yeah, they are yellow, but, well, good luck. Um, hmm. All right. Oh, I'm going to pull this down a bit, because you can see that some of the shell is actually... Uh, oh, I didn't need to pull it down, I just stretch it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay, that'll do, that'll do. Uh, 
let's do some of that eyeball detail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see what color, red and then black. Just gonna set that in. A little bit creepy, but okay. So shift, keep it spherical. Lift it up with that little cone there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Duplicate and I'm gonna make that one black. This might give you a hint actually. Watch what happens. Black. This will give you a hint as to what I'm gonna do in order to do the coloring. So I'm shrinking it down in size, but it's staying a little bit too low. So what I'll do this all. Take both of those, duplicate it. Uh oh. It's gonna be that. So I'm gonna the duplicate action does this nice intuitive. Um, it'll not only repeat the shape, but it'll repeat the um, the last actions, a few actions that you did, as well as replicating the uh, the form. Okay, home view quickly. A little bit, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, I do want some different colors. So, if you notice what happened with the eyeball, it was red, uh, the iris rather, and then all of a sudden it became black as I changed it. Uh, so, that's kind of what I'm going to do here to the shell as well. So, that's its own object. I'm going to make a duplicate. We're going for a red swirl and then some mauve purpley dots. So let's just draw the swirl first. It gets pretty thin and then it kind of comes out a little bit. This is fairly rough, but it's not rocket science. We're done. I'm going to extend this quite tall. Can you guess what I'm going to do here? Uh, so this one, whichever one's on the outside, because there's a duplicate within a duplicate there, I'm going to make that one red. And this is going to become a cutting shape. I know I should probably be doing the negative, but there is a way around this. Okay, 90 degrees. Over, and you can start to see where it will interact with the shell. Let's make it a little bit taller. I'll do shift just so that it stays proportional. Um, yeah. Kind of like that. So, yeah, pressing shift, selecting the red portion. Actually, I don't want the red portion. I'm going to push this back. So I'm going to count how many spaces I do, too. Actually, I'm just going to hold shift and hit it once. Now we can see the pink. And I'm going to now select the cutting curl and the pink shell. I can confirm that I have only two shapes here, and I'm going to group them together. Takes a second. And now you see the red shape, but I still have to come back and move the red shell. And if I moved it all the way back, then you kind of get this weird marbling effect, which I don't really want in this instance. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it down very fine here small increments. So I'm just going to shrink it ever so slightly. So, ta-da! Nice little pattern there. Okay, so next we also want there to be some purple. This one's going to be tricky because we'll have to cut holes in both of those shapes. So duplicate again. This one's going to be mauve purple. Yeah. Um, 
And again, I'm going to do scribble. Quickly look at my reference image. So five dots. Okay. Like oval. Let's smooth that out a little bit there. It sounds more like a cat sometimes in the cartoon. No more Christmas. Boys will watch it. All right, um, zoom out. So in the yeah, in this case again, the cutting action. But I'm going to make two copies of this because I'll be using one up with the pattern. with the show. Lift it up. I'm gonna make sure it's going all the way through. Put extra there. So now I'll do the duplicate. Control D. I'm gonna select the pink sphere or shape shell and group that together. It takes a second. Oh and I have the other one here. Hmm. So now I want to uncover the red shell again. So I'm going to move the move and back one full space. Oh, yeah. oh. So now I can click the red one because I don't want to see red in here. And I'm going to click this shape here. Two shape selected group. And a little bit of funniness there, but I think that's okay. Oh, let's flip it around. Alright. And we're gonna squeeze this one again so that we can see the pattern. What happened to our swirl? Did our swirl not go all the way through the whole shell? Again, a nice function where we can actually I'll have to go back a couple steps here. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's a non-destructive design. Aha. Uh -huh. There's our swirl. It did not. Oops. Yeah, you had to, sorry, you had to punch through the whole shape. So, group. There we go. And red sphere. set of holes. I'm being a little bit quick here, but uh, when you see the outlines turn red rather than light blue, you have to be patient and wait for it to do its action. Again, I made a mistake there. Red? Yes. Kind of shade. There we go. Okay, carry the snail. Yay. Yeah, so I'll grab everything. Lasso. And just so you, for the home view that you normally get, I'm just gonna bring them over like this. Um, I can 
increase his size a little bit. Uh, yay! Okay. Thank you for watching. And a uh, handy little trick there for showing off how to create some kind of complex color things going on there. And a little bit of waviness underneath as well. Right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.